The media is in full on panic as mass laughs sweep the industry or as BuzzFeed puts it, the coronavirus is a media extinction event. I think there will uh, I think there we will unfortunately see more closures of newspapers, more news deserts as a result of this, said one publisher. Oh, oh, boo hoo. And what does CNN say? CNN's article. Hundreds of journalists are being laid off right when the public needs them the most. What I think it's really, really funny about this is that the media has been pumping out trash, garbage, fake news meant to shock and cause fear and has attacked the president for his unsubstantiated hope, notably CNN. And now they're getting laid off because of it. I think it's important to realize we're facing a serious and unprecedented event. I think it's also important to realize that many of these news outlets were trying to shut down any hope of success, any hope of us getting through this with this constant fear mongering, fear mongering. Donald Trump comes out and says, there's something I'm hopeful about. And they try and smack him down. And you know what happens? The more they sow fear, and I don't mean fear as in like, hey, these things are happening. I mean, fear as in we will never survive. Trump is the worst. He is failing this country. And the more they wiggle their arms and many people believe we can't beat this thing. People stop spending, they give up and they start focusing on themselves. So a lot of these companies that are being shut down, they're not advertising. And the media is kind of getting a little bit of what they've dished back. And I think it's funny that they want us to be upset about it. Well, you look, man, my sympathy goes out to anybody who's been laid off or, you know, they've lost their job, been furloughed or received a pay cut because it's not cool that we're all dealing with this. It's an unprecedented event. I love to argue with, you know, the writers and their BuzzFeed articles and point out why I think they're wrong. This is not the right way. But if your industry is built upon exaggerations, hyperbole, lies and fear, don't be surprised when you're one of the first to go when everyone realizes, guess what? Your job was a vanity job. And I've pointed this out many times. Many of these people who work in these news industries, they call themselves journalists, but what do they really do? They write about internet gossip. 12 pictures of Brad Pitt's junk. Oh, okay, yeah, journalist. Now I get it. There are real journalists losing their jobs like local reporters, and that's a really, really bad thing. Not these digital media outlets. I'm, I'm not super concerned. Look, man, you are getting paid like fifty to $60,000 a year. Not all of them, but some of them. We've seen the salary range. Some people at BuzzFeed get 90 to 100 plus. And what do you really do all day? You show up to your, your New York office eating your muffin with your, drinking your Starbucks and you try and figure out what to complain about. I know because I do basically the same thing. So I'm not I'm not going to complain when when it comes time for my industry, for what I do to, you know, to go to, to go to go south. Is this really necessary in an apocalypse? No, of course not. You guys should be focusing on, you know, if you're going to go spend money, go spend money on important supplies and things you might need. Well, BuzzFeed makes a ton of their money off cookware at Walmart. So I'll put it this way. It feels like independent creators aren't hurting nearly as much, though they are. Like most of my videos are getting demonetized. Apparently now YouTube is saying I'm going to be okay to talk about coronavirus stuff. We'll see what happens. But I've been getting, getting hit with waves of demonetizations. Fortunately for me, I'm just one dude in my house and I can't go anywhere anyway, so I've built something where I can work. These people are all collapsing and they are panicking because of it. Let's read the story from BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed says, oh, wait, wait, what's this? The journalists at BuzzFeed News are proud to bring you trustworthy and relevant reporting about the coronavirus. To, to help keep this news free, become a member and sign up for our newsletter outbreak today. I think it's funny that people attacked me because I have sponsors on my videos and I've talked about like, hey, bad stuff is going to happen. You should consider these things. I've, I've, I've said no to like the majority of people who wanted to run sponsor stuff on my, on my channels. Like, you know, well, I'm not going to get into it because I'll, I'll, I'll let them retain their privacy. But I've only done sponsor spots for a few companies when I think it's actually helpful or relevant. BuzzFeed is absolutely trying to capitalize on this. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. What does BuzzFeed do? They make media. So they made a newsletter, Outbreak Today, and you can become a member to get it. That's clever. Otherwise, they're going to go out of business, so I can respect them for trying to save their business. But how are you going to come after me if I'm like, sponsors are drying up, companies are going under, media people are getting laid off, and I'm going to promote something to help pay the bills. And then they all literally do the same thing. They're absolutely coming out now more than ever saying we're hurting. BuzzFeed says, as the reporters, photographers, editors, and designers at the Seattle Times report on a community stricken with the coronavirus... Their paper is also battling another serious threat. In just a few weeks, its local advertising business has all but disappeared. A cruel irony of the pandemic, which in the United States has grown to more than 42,000 KAA, we get this from a few days ago. Virtually all entertainment advertising is gone. 
Restaurants gone. Automobile advertising is just starting to get impacted. Alan Fisco, the president of the, and, and the CFO of the paper, told BuzzFeed News. The free fall in advertising comes amid a pre- precip- uh, precipitous rise in readership. The paper's online traffic has been at times off the charts, according to Fisco, and subscriptions, which account for more than 60% of the company's revenues, are rising. But those revenues don't make up for the nearly total collapse of local ads. It's unclear if or when they will return to pre-pandemic levels. If you go back to events in the past where you've seen some big impacts to ad spending, does it all of it come back? It hasn't. Well, you can always trust the media to write about themselves. And to an extent, I can't blame them. They live in this world where they're the, they're, you know, it's, it's me first, right? So all these journalists are now losing their jobs. They're freaking out. So what happens? They write about themselves. They look at all these stories. Oh no, paradigm shift. Oh no, layoffs. Here's, uh, here's CNN. Hundreds of journalists being laid off right when the public needs them most. I'm going to prove that's not true. Very simply. Take a look at this from Gallup. Approval and disapproval rating. President Donald Trump's approval rating is 60%. His disapproval rating is 38. The news media's approval rating is 44%. 16 points below Donald Trump. You want to talk about whether we need the media or not? I'm going to go ahead and say no. I mean, we, we do. We just don't need these, you know, these, these rage bait digital garbage sites. We need local reporting. Local reporting, uh, local reporting is very important. CNN is uh, crying, saying 2020 was supposed to be a banner year for digital media. BuzzFeed, Group 9, and Vice each indicated that this year they would be profitable. Ooh, talk about bad timing. A long, elusive goal for an industry bedeviled by diminishing ad dollars. But no one could have predicted that a global health crisis would hit just as business was picking up. BuzzFeed CEO Jonah Peretti told staffers in a memo that the company had been knocked off track because of coronavirus. Though we were well on track to be profitable this year, the impact of the coronavirus on the global economy will almost certainly cause the company to lose money, even as we take aggressive action to control costs. BuzzFeed was in, has instituted pay cuts and scaled back on travel and hiring, according to the memo. It was obtained by CBS News. Peretti will not take a salary for the rest of the year. Well, that's respectable to uh, Jonah Peretti, but I'm sure he's extremely wealthy anyway. Personally, I'd rather lose money than lose colleagues. Jane Litvinenko, senior reporter at BuzzFeed News, tweeted, A record-shattering 3.3 million Americans filed for unemployment last week after residents in many parts of the country were ordered to stay home and practice social distancing. Events were canceled, bars were shuttered, restaurants pivoted to take out only, and ad dollars dried up. Many industries are reeling from the ramifications of the coronavirus pandemic, and the already fragile media industry is now under serious threat. CNN Business reported on Sunday that at least 100 people in local newsrooms in the U.S. lost their jobs in March. By Friday, that number shot up to at least 300 people as the impact of the coronavirus continues to royal newspapers and digital media companies. And it gets better. First, let's talk about the economy. Once they shut down all the bars and local restaurants, right, that had a ripple effect. Local news outlets rely on, you know, Joe's Diner to buy an ad on their channel saying, come to Joe's. Many cable networks actually run local and regional ads too for, you know, Joe's Diner. Uh, Joe's Diner's not a real place. I'm sure there's some place called that. I'm just making something up. You get the point. Local businesses shuttered. The next wave hit media industries. It is a slow motion explosion and it's going to hit. This wave is going to hit everyone. You may feel like you're not affected right now, but it is coming to your industry because this disruption in in mainstream life, main street businesses is going to move outward. The next big hit we're going to see is the uh, uh, landlords, insurance, maintenance, janitors, you know, building manager stuff. All of these companies, April 1st, they're not going to see that rent money come in. And then we're going to see another wave of layoffs. So it's a slow motion explosion. One part of the economy just got pulled out and now it's going to have a major ripple effect. Many people, I mean, we're, we, we have a large service sector economy. So all of these wait staff, clerks, baristas, et cetera, gone, can't pay their rent. What happens? Well, we're going to pass this stimulus bill, but it does impact media. And the worst thing about it is that the big fake news, digital rage bait people are the ones who, who, who get past it for the most part. And that kind of bums me out, but they're going to get hit too. I'm going to get hit as well. And we all know it's coming. Advertisers, there are still many businesses and a lot of businesses that are flourishing right now. 
But this wave is going to come to your industry. It doesn't matter what you do. You, you, you could be, look, when, when someone can't pay their bills, right? So they don't take out ads for, for, for local media. Then the media can't support their staff and they cut, they, they lay people off. The salaries go down. Then all of those people can't pay their rent. Guess what? No landlords, no building managers. They're not going to be hiring contractors. They're not going to be hiring, you know, building maintenance, plumbers, electricians, carpenters, because they're not going to have the money for it. So then you're going to see all of those people take a major hit. Then they can't pay their rent. Then they can't pay their bills. This will then ripple to the electric company, to the local utilities and to the taxpayers. Or I'm, I'm sorry, to the, the, the tax payment system, the government. They're not going to have that income because the commerce is shutting down. This wave of disruption, it hasn't affected everything yet. So many people, it's, it's like, it's a, you ever see Guardians of the Galaxy? When all those ships are trying to stop the bigger ship and then one blows and it creates a big wave? That's what we can expect. Now, here's where it gets worse. Traffic boom. CNN says BuzzFeed avoided layoffs through salary reductions, but that strategy isn't being implemented, ev- implemented everywhere. Future PLC, which owns Laptop Mag, Tom's Guide, Live Science, and other publications is planning to lay off at least nine employees out of 59 in the union, according to a statement from its union on Tuesday. Here's what's interesting. A lot of these people are saying they don't know what's going to happen or why, but there has been a major boom in internet traffic because people are at home and have nothing else to do. Now, this has created a a twofold problem uh, for many different creators. For me, particularly, I haven't really gained from it. In fact, my, my views have typically gone down. And one of the reasons is many people have no choice but to be YouTubers now. When we look at all these big journalists, like seriously, uh, 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 Richard Engel, for instance, when we look at these comedians, they're doing YouTube. Like, I know they're not really doing YouTube. Like, they kind of are, but they're like sitting in their kitchen talking about stuff. And that's what a lot of YouTubers do. There's, there's, there's going to be an influx in content production. There may be someone who would normally make a YouTube video once a week. Then they would go work a regular job. Now they can't. So all they can do is just make videos at home. This is increasing competition by a very, very large degree. However, for sites like BuzzFeed, they are seeing a massive uptick in, in traffic. And that also means they have to pay for that. When, when you get inundated with people going to your site, downloading stuff, it's not, part, it's not the most expensive thing in the world. But if they see a major uptick, they're going to have to spend more for hosting while their revenue goes down. Look, if you have a million viewers and you sell an ad for, I don't know, a coffee or something, you'll make money. If you then get 2 million viewers and you can't sell any ads, you are now paying twice what you paid before for the same hosting with no revenue. So it's even worse than just not having revenue. It's the ship sinking, man. And it's going to hit everybody. CNN reports, Rafi Letzler, Letzler, a writer at Live Science and member of the Futures Union, told CNN Business, that the union is hoping management will find another solution to cut costs, one that will not require laying off people who he says are crucial to the company's news coverage. There is a concern across the board, both in the unit and outside of it, that management does not understand the consequences of some of the layoffs they've proposed. In many instances, they're maintaining the accuracy and quality of coronavirus coverage. Everyone is working very hard, frankly, harder than the company has earned from them at this point. The sad twist about these layoffs and restructuring is that they come just as the public is hungry for information about the pandemic. But there are now fewer journalists to provide vital information about it. Traffic is up for many sites and TV ratings have increased as people are stuck at home watching the news and then learning that the media has been lying to them. So yeah, that's also bad for them. Lutster has written a number of coronavirus news stories and explainers, including can homemade masks protect you from COVID-19? Letzler told CNN Business that their site's traffic has been the highest in its history. Wow. Future executives did not respond to multiple requests for comment. When CNN Business described the urgency to the company's phone operator, she said she was among those being laid off. Vox Media, which reported a profit last year, has not announced layoffs or pay cuts, though their CEO is saying they're going to make adjustments. While there will obviously be an impact at this point, it is too early to understand those implications. There were already some immediate cost saving savings that we will see from the suspension of business travel, off-sites, work at conferences, and other items. A Vox Media spokesman declined to make, uh, to make Bankoff available for further comment. The head of Geo Media, the company formerly, formerly known as Gizmodo, sent a dire email to its staff last week with the subject line, brace for impact. Yeah, I hope everybody does. Freelancers left in the lurch. 
So it's not just the people working. I mean, man, we're just coming off that AB5 bill in California, which basically disincentivized the hiring of freelance writers, which is a, a large portion of writers are freelance. Like, like Vice, for instance, will hire someone for one or two stories periodically. You can't do that anymore. There's a limit. So now you, companies like Vox actually severed the contracts with all of their freelancers. And that was the, the Democrat who pushed that bill. Now we're going to see the same thing. Similar. We're going to see all these companies say, we're not doing contracts anymore. Not right now. Or to a certain degree. I mean, the companies will still need written work and it is cheaper to hire a contractor, but they're going to cut off freelancers. They say local newsrooms continue to face constraints on their business. And this is special in trouble uh, during a global. How many times are you going to say that? We get it. They just, OK, sure, fine. They go on to mention that there are people who are uh, in an interview with CNN Business, Kovacs emphasized that temporarily. Uh, so they're saying our newsroom with about 120 employees is the largest in Louisiana and the furloughs will chiefly impact people who cover sports and social events, which have been curtailed. OK, we get it. I can't tell you what's going to happen in the future. What I can tell you is the media can't recover for this, uh, from this. The jobs won't come back, period. Many of these companies are running off of investment and they're struggling to be profitable. So there's nothing to come back to. They already had mass layoffs. One of the worst hit industries will be the media. And you know what? It seems like what we're, the, the, the global pandemic is rapidly getting rid of obsolete industries and services. What BuzzFeed and Vox and these other sites do is only somewhat still relevant. These companies have long competed with people like me. You know, I got started by just taking a GoPro and propping it on my monitor and then talking about stuff. I mean, to be fair, that's how I started doing commentary. For the most part, I would travel around, I'd film stuff, I'd make video edits, and then I slowly started doing more commentary for a combination of reasons. First, the more people watched my videos, the more dangerous it became to actually go out. And then it's sort of a natural evolution for a lot of, you know, field reporters who then move into the more commentary. But the biggest factor is, was, was the danger and the difficulty in going places when too many people know who you are. So I had, to take, I had to take that seriously. But I would just take a GoPro and I'd put it on my monitor right in front of me. And I just talk about stuff and I slowly improved from there. But my costs are, are relatively low compared to these people who have this massive staff. And to be honest, I don't know, I guess... When it comes to these these big co companies like BuzzFeed, they're relying on a collective of people to combine their abilities to make a piece of content. When it comes to YouTube, people who are just naturally good and hardworking will rise up above most other people. So if you take a bunch of people who only somewhat are only somewhat passionate about news and you put them all together, you'll get a product. You take individuals, you know, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but people like me who literally take no day off, I don't take any days off. And I actually work double shifts most days. Well, then, you know, I'm going to do well for relatively little cost and they won't because their staff needs decent salaries, high enough salaries to pay their rent. And they don't want to work on weekends and they want to get out of the office as fast as possible. So that's normal. I'm not I'm not dragging them for it. that's normal business. Well, that's going to be expensive for these companies to produce a video like this 20 minutes long. You know how much that would cost them an obscene amount of money. Well, I mean, if it was just this, it wouldn't. But for a lot of these companies, when they want to produce a few minutes, it costs ten to twenty thousand dollars. They hire multiple people. They have all this equipment. They got to pay for travel costs. They got to give people per diems and stuff. And if they want to do like a ten-minute documentary, seriously, if they want to make something like ten or fifteen minutes to compete with the twenty minutes I just did, it could cost them fifty grand. I'm not kidding. And this is going to obliterate media, and it's going to leave in its wake people like me. One thing that's really kind of interesting coming from the pandemic is the rapid evolution of methodology in industry. We're going to see it. We've already seen a whole bunch of movies go straight to Amazon Prime out of the theaters because theaters are closed. This is an, I mean, we all kind of predicted this would happen at some point, digital download for, for movie releases. Watch it at home. Don't go to the movies. Well, now we're here. We had no choice. Now we're looking at the media collapsing. The, 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 the end of the media industry, the digital media complex, the rage bait nonsense is coming faster than ever because they could barely sustain themselves as it is. But I'll tell you what, with all these people bored at home and people like me who already built a, <laughs> who already built a home studio and make a living doing this, we're the ones in the front of the race. These companies will go. And you know what? There's some bad there local news outlets. We do need them. We do need real reporting. I mean, look, I'm just commenting on what CNN's talking about. 
So we do need legit journalism, and that's going to be hard to maintain. But there are still people who do legit journalism from their home studios. I would say that, you know, most of what I do is political commentary, but I do a decent amount of journalism and original reporting as much as the left, you know, these people who don't like me don't want to admit it. It's actually true. I source, investigate, fact check, and I do all of the basics of journalism when I'm doing my, you know, commentary because it's, it's, it's a mix. There are a lot of people on YouTube who literally just do commentary. They'll have no sources and they'll just be like, I saw on TV, this guy say X, Y, and Z, and that's fine too. But there's a difference when you mix the two. So this is the future. It costs relatively little. Granted, I'm, I'm getting hurt too, right? And I have people who work with me on a variety of projects, so we'll see how things play out. But for the time being, the media is going by the wayside. And I'm going to take, I'll take a wild bet right now. I don't think anyone's going to care. I mean, they will. But for the most part, does BuzzFeed have fans? You know, are there people who wake up like, oh, BuzzFeed's so cool. And then they want to go to BuzzFeed. No. It's something you watch, like you click a link someone sends you and you're like, eh, BuzzFeed. But personalities on Twitter, YouTube, and social media have a core audience. People who are actually like, I know and care and trust this individual. That's something they don't have and they won't maintain. I'll see you on the next segment segment coming up at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you then.